Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another repair video. This time, it's actually something that I own. I've repaired this a number of times before, but I realized I never actually filmed it because I needed to get this fixed like quickly, so I'd never bothered filming it. But uh, this is a Nightcore tube light, and it's one of the older ones with the uh, micro, uh, micro USB for charging. This guy has gotten me through a lot, and you can see it's quite beat up. I keep it on my, my keychain and with my keys and stuff. But yeah, she survived a lot, but uh, she has an intermittent problem, and it, every time you press this button, it slightly flexes the uh, the wires on the board that go to the battery, so they oftentimes will break off or like intermittently be touching, but not you know, actually soldered down correctly. So a lot of times, uh, I'll come to this, it's already happened Three, this is the third time it's happened over the course of maybe like four years so like once a year about it'll do this where it'll either just not turn on at all even though I know this is like charged and it should be good to go or it'll do a weird flickery intermittent light thing when I do turn it on that usually tells me that it's it's happened again the wire broke off on one of the leads so we're just gonna pop this open and uh, I'll show you guys exactly what the problem is and generally how to fix it. So there's four screws. They are pretty like thin Phillips screws. So you're gonna need a small screwdriver. Okay, so remove the screws. Watch out this back piece with the actual keychain part is gonna come out. And you might have to remove the USB port cover. I can't remember, but it doesn't hurt. And the whole thing just sort of plops out. I guess you really didn't re need to remove this, but whatever. So we're left with the top of the board. I did notice, um, I mean, I don't get this wet particularly, but there is like green corrosion on this button. And it looks quite not super happy. Just on the cap though, because the cap I think is like brass or some kind of phosphor bronze or something. But uh, yeah, I noticed that uh, because that's right underneath the, the silicone kind of button exterior. And uh, so far hasn't that hasn't been a problem, but you know, who knows long term. There are two plastic uh, like heat set the bread things that go through the board. You might have to break those off the first time or kind of wiggle these. But you should be able to get this off. There you go. Then you're left with out of the case, the, the uh, oh, very dusty, the uh, board and the battery. And I'm trying to see, this might not have failed in the same way that it did in the past. Because um, the battery contact is still soldered unless if the wire broke inside. This is quite thin wire. So I'm going to actually grab a multimeter and measure this. If the battery measures a good voltage, then that probably means something else is wrong with this. We'll have another problem to fix. Uh, if it's zero volts, then it's probably just that there is a break and it ended up dying or something. completely dead. So the battery on this usually, well, when it's working, it lasts like forever, it seemed like. But I wonder if maybe some corrosion did get in there. And uh, it's very dusty, I've noticed. I don't remember it being that dusty. Just take some compressed air and try to get that a little cleaner. So, I mean, it is possible that something has failed uh, and it ends up draining the battery very fast then. Battery's not... Okay, the battery's maybe slightly puffy. I don't know. There is maybe, maybe the battery is starting to go. Because I've had this for like a number of years, actually for probably like closer to like four years, maybe even a little more. So it is possible that the battery has finally kicked it and the light itself is fine, but the uh, cell isn't. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, charge this up one last time, because this actually still does charge. And it turns on when you plug it in, when you turn it on right after you've charged it. So I know that 
at least the charging circuitry works and kind of the lighting circuitry. So I almost wonder if the battery developed a fault, an internal fault that drains itself very quickly. So I'm going to charge this, measure the voltage, wait a day, measure it again. If it, if it drops a lot, then that probably means the battery is toast. So we're going to have to find a replacement battery then. But uh, yeah, that might be kind of difficult because of how small this battery is. Now this guy isn't particularly expensive. I think it was like eight. It was under 10 bucks when I got it. So it might be worth it to just buy a new one, but I kind of want to fix this one up because everything else about it is like more or less fine. So if I can find a replacement battery in the same size, I can just drop a new one in. Even if it's a different capacity, that should be good enough and we should be good to go. But yeah, let me run some tests and I'll get back to you guys on what I find on this guy. Okay, so it turns out that the old battery is toast. It is slightly puffy and I think what ended up happening was a couple too like one too many times uh, the button pressed in my pocket. You can actually lock this out if you like press and hold the button for like a long time. It'll go into lockout mode to prevent this but I, I don't like that because then when you need the flashlight very quickly it takes like 15 seconds to like turn it on which is really annoying. So I usually don't use that. Probably should have. But anyway, the old battery is toast. It probably got left on in my pocket like a couple times and it just like repeatedly drained the battery fully. Even though the battery is protected, it's, yeah, it's still not good for the battery. So what I ended up doing, I dug out this battery, which is a 280 milliamp hour battery, much bigger. The other battery is uh, behind me right now. I'm trying to see if maybe I can uh, recover it using like a slow charging mode, like a trickle mode. Uh, but I don't really have much hope because the um, I have it actually plugged into one of these uh, TP what was it 5600 or whatever lithium battery uh, chargers and both lights are on which from my experience when whenever I see that that means that the controller is confused because the battery impeded something's wrong it can sense the battery is like dead pretty much uh, so it's it's trying to trickle charge it. I, I measured a voltage on it. I've left it on for like an hour. It's like two point something volts or something, maybe just under three volts now, but I have a feeling that it's not going to be recoverable. So to test, I dug this guy out and I soldered it to the board and I charged it a little bit and it works perfectly. And so I dug out an even smaller battery. This is from a pair of wireless earbuds. This is 50 milliamp hours. So it's tiny and uh it it does work i mean you can see probably won't work for very long especially on the brightest mode but i almost never use it on the brightest mode or if i do it's for like 10 15 seconds just to find my keys or whatever uh, and this should fit so i guess i guess we're just gonna try to reassemble this and hope that uh this works out so yeah uh I'm going to guess finding the exact replacement battery, like the right size one, will cost more than this tube light buying a brand new one. And that's kind of a waste, so I'd rather not have to buy a brand new one of these. So I'm just going to put this battery in its place and this will just be able to maybe give it a little bit more life. So I'm going to see if this will close up with this in here. Yeah. It is a little bit loose there, but eh. actually, no, I think it's like just the right thickness. I can shake it, it's not moving inside, so eh, whatever. Good enough for me. I'm going to reinsert the uh, little hole things here. How does this go? Yeah, these are. Bit fiddly if I'm being honest. Uh, get in there. There we go. And I'm just gonna screw this together just like this. So give me one sec for that. Okay, so as weird as this may look. That's a little battery in here. I think the original battery was maybe like 150 milliamp hours, something like that. So this is a third of the capacity, so a third of the runtime, whatever. But at least it uh, 
So in low mode, high mode. So yeah, at least it works. And this will get me, I don't know. This might only last a year or more, but you know what? Uh, I'd be happy enough. This battery I had sitting in a drawer being not used. So if this can give me another, at least another year of life out of this, I'll be happy enough. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's super important to be able to fix your own stuff. Uh, lithium ion batteries do not last forever, unfortunately. And uh, pretty much every device eventually will come to a day that you need a replacement battery and they're just unobtainium. And uh, it makes it harder when batteries have like specialized circuitry in there that to prevent you from using like a, a, a just a random aftermarket battery. Uh, luckily, I mean, obviously this is a cheap like $10 flashlight, so it doesn't have that sort of problem. It'll take any lithium battery. I can even shove like a much larger one in here. It doesn't care. So yeah, I can keep this running for uh, at least hopefully another couple of years until this totally disintegrates and like the corrosion messes up the board or something. I'll keep using this. And uh, once this totally craps out, then I'll think about replacing it <laughs> or I don't know. Anywho, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you have a Nightcore tube light that's, uh, the battery's not doing so hot, uh, yeah, you can replace them with random batteries. Uh, this one I pulled from a, a pair of True Wireless earbuds that I had that had some other problem that happened with them. Uh, I forget exactly what, but yeah, the battery was small enough to fit and it closes fully, so I'm happy with that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.